Wrong button. <laughs> Hey, how's it going, everybody? I'm Flinger Fu, and today, well, today I'm actually gonna show you guys how to set up a G Portal server because I've got a lot of people that come to me and go, "Oh, hey, how do I rent a server? Where's the best place to rent a server? Where are you know? Once you actually have the server, what are really good settings for it?" Um, and uh, this is going to be a two-part video. I'm going to uh, one. There's gonna be a link down below to uh, certain different server settings that I'm gonna have set up but also really I'm gonna be talking about probably my favorite uh, server provider and that's G portal G portal is been absolutely amazing for me and what I do I love working with them and yes I do work with them um, they um, give me you know, a little bit to help uh, cover my servers and such like that because I host quite a few of them and I've worked with other server providers in the past, but G Portal, in my opinion, has just been the easiest ones to work with, with the best systems because you don't just rent servers when it comes to G Portal. You rent slots and you can assign the slots to whichever game or how many different servers you want for that game. It's really, really, really cool. All right, now if you haven't already and you're looking to rent a server for G Portal, I I have a link down below that'll give you 10% off um, any servers that you uh, rent through G Portal just by clicking that link. It's pretty dang cool. Also, it kind of helps me out a little bit, but you know, it's it it's just really awesome. All right, so if you're a first time here on the G Portal page and you want to set up a server, what you're gonna want to do is you're gonna want to go up and rent server. But before we do that, I'm gonna show you just a, a bunch of the different servers that they host. Uh, these are a lot of their popular ones, being from Farm Simulator, Minecraft, uh, Valheim, Ark Survival Evolved. It's really good. Um, also Conan, and then you scroll down and just keep scrolling. They've got so many different things that you can get. Uh, let's see, let's go up to rent a server up here in the top left. And then down here, they've got just this huge list of servers that you can rent for all sorts of different games. It's really impressive. I mean, if you want, if you love playing these games, but you don't want to play on that game's public server, just rent one and play with your friends in private. It's, it's really, really cool. You, they even have Skyrim nowadays. That's cool. It requires a mod to be able to do it, but it's really, really awesome. All right, let's scroll back up here to the top. So once you're here and you want to rent a server, say we want to rent a uh, Ark Survival of All server. Let's click that. You go through, and then you determine just how many slots you set you uh, want on your server. Like I said before, in G Portal, you don't rent servers; you rent slots. And the amount of slots you can distribute however you want. Say if you want one uh, server with ten slots, right here it is. Bam, ten slots. All right, but if you want, say, four servers with 10 slots, you get this one, all right? And then you can, uh, for ARC, you can cluster them up and you can just have each one with 10 slots. It's really, really awesome. All right, and just remember that we will come back to clustering here in just a little bit because how you cluster a server is one of the things we are absolutely going to be covering. All right, and from here, it just goes... Um, whichever one you want. You can even create your own configuration, which I think is just an amazing uh, thing that they have added to this. All right, once you go through and you click to this, you can decide uh, where you want to actually have your server. And then also remember that where you place the server, the available locations, there is kind of like a ping test here. Let me show you. And they have this readily available here, which is awesome. So since I'm up in the Pacific Northwest, um, I Los Angeles is the closest place to me. So naturally, I would want to rent a server for that just where I'd have the lowest ping. But depending on where you are in the world, just click this drop down menu and it'll tell you which server bank they have and they've got a lot of them um, that you uh, want to be closest to normally my ones are coming out of Washington DC just because I have people from all over the world and I sacrifice a little bit of mine so where they can have a little bit better that's just the way it works for me um, all right so let's go into uh, create your own configuration all right, now from here, there's all sorts of different methods that you can uh, sign up for. You can even, they even have a slide bar for how many slots you want. You can get like a thousand if you want, which is, I mean, honestly, it's not that much, 550. Uh, I've been tempted a couple times. All right, and then uh, through here, you can go through, you can, once again, they have the um, ping test down here, but they don't tell you the pings on it, which is kind of unfortunate. Um, but other than that, it's really good. And then 
For uh, the payment options, they have some really, really robust payment options. Here, let me show you. Uh, let's just uh, let's create a dummy one for 10 days just so I can show you uh, some of the cool stuff that they've got here. A lot of the payment options, a lot of the other places don't offer a bunch of this stuff. I mean, of course, you can do it through credit card and PayPal and PaySafe card, but WeChat, that, hey, if you're in the States, we, WeChat's kind of taken off. That'll help you out quite a bit. And then from here, all you do is just order it, and then it'll come right in. And once you have it there, um, oh, uh, you'll have a dummy server set up, and then you can just uh, go through and start setting it up. And that's what we're going to cover here in a sec. All right, now, since I've been a longstanding uh, um, G Portal member, I've got a ton of different servers. But here, for this one, I'm going to set up a brand new server. Let's add a server to the cluster. Right through here. Now, from here, we can pick any game that we want. All sorts of different games. It's, yeah, we've already went through the list. But yeah, say if we want a uh, PC server, 10 slots right here. Arc Survival Evolved, click Add, and it'll just straight up just add, it'll assign those 10 slots to you and then give you access to uh, set them up. And let's see, right here is the dummy one, so let's go with the here, click into that. All right, now inside here, now this right here, this is like a big uh, bit where, you know, I've been warned, don't show this screen. Well, since this, uh, since this server is kind of a dummy one, I'm actually showing it for you just so you know never to share these. All right, these numbers right down here, never ever tell them to anybody because that is how you get into the back end of your server. So, uh, yeah, if anybody has these, they can just be pop it right open and be like, bam, okay, hey, we're going to mess with them. But also, this is also how uh, you can get in. You can do backups of your server, um, and you can just uh, control the back end of it, just like if you were uh, playing in single-player ARC, but you just do it through FTP. All right, so uh, let's get into basic settings. All right, so inside basic settings, there's a few different things. One, uh, well, you can actually set it up so where you can have just its Steam, which allows mods. Uh, you can allow just the Epic Game Store, which is, it's no mods, but it's also uh, ones that are uh, copies of the art game that have been uh, purchased through Epic. And, or you can do the Steam Epic Crossplay, which does work, but you still cannot have mods. All right, so coming down, you can set up the name of your server. You can also assign the different slots on the map. You can click and you can just have a drop down menu that tells you uh, which um, map you want to play on. Now, once you uh, assign the map, I would recommend, say, if you want to assign it as, say, we want to go Genesis 2. Um, assign it to Genesis 2, click save up here, and then turn on the server for a second and then turn it back down and then turn it off. That way there, it'll just initialize all the specific settings that are designed for that map. And then you can come down and then you can change them afterwards. It's just really easy if you do it in that step instead of, you know, go through setting up everything, saving it, turning it on, and then wondering why a bunch of your settings changed once you loaded up a specific map. Set the map first and then after that you go down and then you start adjusting the settings. All right, so once we have that, uh, you can set up, if you want to have a server password, you can put it in right through here. Um, if you don't want to have a server password, if you want to use a whitelist instead, you can set it up through in, um, in down below, and we'll get to that here in just a second. All right, so for allowed shared connection, say if uh, people are playing on family share accounts for Steam, this will allow it. Normally, I just turn that off. It's, yeah, it's just a bit of a hassle. Um, activate battle eye. Uh, this one right here, um, if you want to have the anti-cheat stuff on there, you can have this on, but a lot of times, a lot of people don't want to play on public servers just because they don't want to. And also, if you trust your friends, you can just turn that off. Uh, that way there, there's nothing additional that you can uh, um, that you have to have running while you're playing the game. And honestly, if everybody uh, agrees to it that's playing on the server, you can just uninstall BattleEye from Arc and then just play on just your private server without BattleEye running as long as you trust all your friends. It's good. All right, and then um, activate VAC. This right here is the anti, uh, yeah, valve cheat. Um, that one right there, you can just turn that off. That one right there, you can't get rid of in the, uh, the thing, but you can just turn it off so where you don't have to have that running on the server. Um, and then here, you can actually set up uh, your uh, message of the day. Also, there is kick idle players. That right there is just if somebody goes AFK for too long, it just automatically kicks them. Um, you can set the message of the day. See, we can set it as like, hello. And then since we're going to be building an echo chamber, we can just, hello, hello, right, and then there we go. 
Okay, so that right there, that's the first annoying message they're going to be seeing as soon as they log in. All right, now, this is how you set up a whitelist. Um, exclusive join. All right, um, so if you want to have people's Steam IDs um, be de the determining factor as to whether or not they can join, and in my opinion, this is the most secure if you want to just have just your friends. But it does take a little bit of working with your friends to be able to set it up. Uh, so if you uh, click that on, you toggle that, and then you put in your Steam ID 64 in here. Now, how you get your Steam ID 64, that is another topic which we will cover right now. All right, now if you want to find your Steam ID, you can go to one of these different tools. You can go to the Steam IO uh, lookup, or you can also go to the Steam ID finder. Uh, you type in whatever uh, 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 name that you have on Steam, and you type it in here. You find Steam ID, and it'll go down through. Just make sure you get the ID 64. It's 17 digits. Uh, just in a row. If there's, if it has anything other, any hash marks, any dashes, or whatever, that's not the correct one. 17 numbers in a row is the correct one. All right, there's another easier way of actually getting uh, your Steam ID. All you do is go up here to, uh, um, you open up Steam, and then in Steam, all you do is go down, you click Profile. Now, from pro Profile, you right-click, you click uh, Copy Page URL, and then you just paste that into any file anywhere, and then you get that 17-digit string that's in there. All right, so by pasting the URL in there, we have this. Now, this right here, this is my Steam ID copy. Now, this right here, this is a list of all of the whitelist ones that I keep on my uh, on my whitelist. So let's don't save that. We just have that. So now we just to take and then just Control V, stick it in there, and it just copy paste it. So that is my Steam ID put in here, so where I can join the exclusive bit. Now, also, if you want people to have admin access as well, you can put it right inside of there. All right, now don't be confused when it uh, says whitelist down here. That is not the section that I use. Um, I, uh, it's it's never worked properly for me. Uh, the exclusive join ID is the one that I use, so it works. It works really, really well. All right, so right now we have it set up so where I'm the only person that could join this. And then now from here, um, you can go through, you can set up some of the logging things. A lot of them really aren't uh, necessary unless you're trying to troubleshoot some sort of problem with there. And then the G portal support says, hey, just turn on game log and we can find out exactly what's going on. There, the G portal support is normally really, really good. But for most part, a lot of the times you don't need that stuff on. Um, let's see. And then go through. This right here is just all log stuff. And then... Uh, here's another good one. This is every time that uh, the server restarts, it does a dino wipe. Um, a lot of times you can have this set up and it does help your uh, server run a little bit smoother, <laughs> especially if you're uh, running mods and stuff like that. It does take the server a, a couple more, a little bit longer to turn on every each time, but that extra time to turn on is it, it ensures it's basically it's giving itself a is it's cleaning itself every time you turn it off and on. It's pretty good. I like it. Um, and then from here, we'll go down. Now, if you want to have uh, certain broadcast messages, say if you want to have a certain 10-minute timer um, every time that you uh, restart the server and it delays the shutdown, just where it just uh, whenever you uh, restart it and there are people playing on it, it won't just uh, just crash to desktop and be like, oh, sorry, the server closed. You're screwed. Uh, yeah, it doesn't matter if you were taping a giga. No, this right here, this can give it 10 minutes. Say if you want to put in, say, 10-minute timer, it would be like... Oops. Wrong button, it. And then that way there. And then uh, it says uh, it'll be 10 minutes. That's this way here, it will um, give it a 10 minute. Um, it'll give it 10 minutes from the moment that you press the restart button until uh, um, it actually starts it. And all you just click add and it puts it down here. You can reconfigure this to all sorts of different bits. And then you can get really colorful with it, really funny. Normally we do on my servers. It's, it's, it's kind of a thing. All right, now from here, uh, New Year's event, that one right there is going to be going away here soon. I wouldn't worry about that, but if the New Year's is um, active, all you do is just click this, and then it'll uh, put in uh, times for the loot drops. Now for here, Cross Travel Arc. Remember earlier when I said this is how, that we're going to be discussing how you cluster servers? This is how you do it. Uh, you uh, enable Cross Travel Arc, and then you copy this ID. This ID is specific for each certain servers. You can even put in your own specific one. Um, you can type in whatever one you want and you can do it manually or you can go with this code. I find it better just to go with these codes because nobody will be able to guess them. 
and then kind of link to your server. But yeah, that's just me. Um, so these codes right here, they're really hard to figure out. Um, but you do need to take this code right here, copy paste it, uh, copy it, go to the other server that you're putting it in, uh, enable cross travel arc and then paste the same code in there and then that way there those two servers will be connected You can transfer between those two servers freely at will. It's really really cool All right now here you can go through and then you can determine if people want to, if you want to allow people to uh, Upload or download from your server to like private um, to their own private servers or even single player it Yeah, it's it's pretty cool. And then there's uh, the dino. There's survivor downloads uh, dino download, oh, item downloads, dino downloads, uh, prevent survivor uploads. These are, these are the ones to your server. These are the ones off your server. So yeah, uh, pay very close attention to them. And then also down here is a very specific one. Uh, no transfer from filtering. If you are, if you have a cluster and you enable this, People aren't going to be able to transfer off your cluster. They're going to be locked in your cluster. It's its own little thing. They can freely travel between all the um, servers that are on the cluster, but um, that's all they're transferring to. They can't go to their single player. They can't go off, off to their own servers. Everybody's stuck in their own in on those servers, and it actually creates a really cool environment. I really love that. If whenever I run a cluster, I always put no transfer from filtering on just because. And then at the end of the server, I'll turn that off and then people can freely transfer their dinos to their single player once everybody's done having a bunch of fun. It's pretty cool. All right, now we're getting into the nitty gritty parts of the server. Okay, so uh, say if you want an active event, all the ones that uh, um, you don't have to download a bunch of stuff for, um, th this is how you turn them on. Now, there are ones on here, like the Fear Evolved. Uh, this right here will be last year's. It's always last year's. Um, and then you'll have, like, the pumpkins and stuff like that. There's some things that will not work, and those are the ones that, uh, when wildcard patches right for that, that's what they are enabling. So, this right here, um, everything that doesn't require that patch will get enabled. Kind of cool. All right, so difficulty offset. Um, this right here determines how, uh, um what level dinosaurs you want and how well, basically how dangerous it is. I always, if you want level 150 dinos, all you do is go 1.0 right there. And then for right here, uh, override official difficulty. This one right here, a lot of people won't touch it. I always insist on touching it because everything in arc is in increments of 30 or increments of three. So when you're setting up the uh, servers uh, in difficulty offset 1.0 is level 30 dinos. Uh, difficulty offset um, 2 is level 60 and so forth. And then you have um, 90, 120, 150, which means that 5.0 will be level 150 dinos. Um, normally, you don't have to do this, but just in case, uh, sometimes it, it with certain mods and whatnot, it just will not activate that properly. So it's just better if you override the official difficulty, put it at 5.0 right here, so you just don't have to worry about it. And you can go really, really high on the levels on these guys. So, But also, be careful. All right, so server PVE sets the... Um, Server to server PVE. Uh, this right here, uh, normally they're on default PVP. But if you go to PVE, there's a f certain few things that um, will be enabled. You have no uh, timers on your cryos. Uh, you won't be able to uh, um, hurt your own dinos, which a lot of people really don't like because breeding an arc is a thing. So, uh, yeah, use this... Uh, Decide which way you want. There's all sorts of different uh, benefits to having it on PVP and then also on PVE. All right, so uh, scrolling down a little bit more, uh, there's certain ones that are set up for, say, if you're using Fjorder, uh, this right here uh, is just baked into the settings. We're not using Fjorder, so that doesn't matter if it's on or off. I'm going to turn it off, but yeah. All right, so go down, let's see, single player settings. This right here turns on a whole slew of different things if you enable it. It makes your, your own dinos and your character basically super powered. I don't like using it. Um... Let's see, all the tribe war stuff and the PvP stuff, I'm just going to gloss over. Uh, floating names, this is another thing if you want to be able to see people's names. If you want a better PvP experience or a PvP experience where people can seriously sneak up on you, you won't have any problems seeing their name, That just turn that off. Yeah, it's up to you guys. Alright, allow hit markers. This right here is whenever you uh, um, shoot something, that little 
thud that you get at the end and then the little red uh, flash of your crosshairs, that's what that is. All right, server crosshair, uh, this right here enables your crosshair whenever you're uh, aiming down your sights to your crossbow or your long neck or anything like that. It does help out. All right, I'm not going to uncover, um, you know, which settings here are the best when it comes to this. I will link down below to uh, the one the uh, server settings that I think are the best um, that I use on my server settings. And I, I like them. Uh, they're, they've worked out for me quite a bit. It's actually um, ones I use in my single player as well that I carry over and use onto that. So the title of the video is Best Single Player Settings, but it's also settings that I use on my uh, hosted servers. Yeah, they work out both. So, yeah. Um, all right. And then coming down here, just all the different XPs that you go through. All right, now here's one that a lot of people really don't uh, um, understand that I've noticed. And uh, through my Discord, I get it as a question quite a bit. All right, clamp resource harvest damage. This right here means that whenever you hit something, it's going to give you a maximum amount of uh, harvested stuff. Just turn that off. And I honestly, I wish G Portal would turn that off by default because it does make things a little bit weird um, because I've had to answer the question quite a bit. But that's they have their reasons, so I'll leave them to that. All right, uh, use optimized harvesting health. I just turned that off as well. Uh, that way there, whenever you hit something, you get over, you get harvest and over harvest, and they do matter. Uh, coming down a little bit more. Uh, you can set up the day-night cycle. You can set up everything. It's um, If you've ever looked through the single-player settings, uh, they have those plus more in here. It's, it's quite a bit of awesome stuff. Uh, you can go through allow cave building, uh, PVE, PVP, cruise it on down through here as well. You can even fine tune how much uh, each, uh, every time you level up your character, how much buffs they, how, how many points they get per level up. It, it, like I said, it's really extensive. And then we'll come down through here. There's quite a bit of stuff that you can just fiddle around with. Uh, you can and mess with the taming speed multipliers. I cover all these in my single player setting ones. They directly transfer over uh, for my uh, um, breeding set stats that I use on my game, on my servers, and also in a lot of my series. Uh, they're found in that video that'll come through and it'll tell you all the breakdown in here. If I added it into this video, it would take forever. All right, now we get down to the procedural bit. Now this right here, the procedural bits, I would recommend do not doing on a server, but you can do this procedural arc. Remember that setting that um, Wildcard did many years back where you could do pr procedural arcs? Yeah, you can do that on the G Portal servers. But I would recommend that you go into single player and then you uh, mess around with the procedural settings and then you get just the proper procedure um, procedural settings that you want and then transfer them over here. That way there you're not having to mess with your server quite a bit because it'll take you probably three times as long if you do it on the server as opposed to doing on the uh, single player and then just copying it over. But the procedural stuff does work, and they're, all the settings are here. Now, once you have those, you can actually get, once you have all the basic stuff done, you can go in here to the other settings. All right, so you can go into the... Drop down menus for all the INIs right here. So you have easy access to all the INIs of your server. Just, I mean, if you want, say, like the uh, ban list, right here. If you want the game INI, right here. If you want the game user settings, right here. And you just click in, it's right here. All you do is just put in your INI settings, and they're there. Now, if you've already started your server once, which I have, uh, it will auto-populate with the default settings, which are right here. But we can go through, and we can change all of these. Uh, to whatever we want. And this is the same settings that are on the uh, UI panel over there. All right, so now from here, we can go to the logs, the console, the engine settings. But nope, we're going to cut straight to mods because this is one that I get quite, uh, questions about quite a bit. When you click into the mods, you are greeted with all sorts of different ones. Now, I've got ones that I've traditionally used on here, which generally auto-populate the first little bit. But if you uh, want to go through and say if you want... Uh, You want Structures Plus, all you do is just go like that, type it in here, install.
and then bam, it's right there. Now, once it's in here, I would recommend that you activate it, turn on your server once, go through, make sure your settings are good, and then uh, um, you can uh, close the server again, and then you can start adding a couple more mods. A lot of people, they'll go through, they'll just add just a ton of mods, and you know, like 17, I mean, I've, saw, I've seen some people with all the way up to like 45 mods on one server, and then they just load them all up at once, and then they don't go in, they don't check the server, um, and then all of a sudden they're wondering why the server won't load, why they're having problems, while there's just a crash. Well, a lot of times it's just a mod conflict that's going on on there. So, yeah, um, I would recommend that you have a group of mods, say like five to ten mods if you really love playing with them, and then you, uh, use just those ones, and then you verify that they work together, and then you add in a couple more, you know, as you want to change up your play experience, and but you verify that each time they work. Now, if we wanted, say, uh, um, eco structures and decor, we put it right here, and we can put it like this. And then also, if you have um, certain mods on your uh, um, that say that they have to be number one in the playlist, and a lot of times it's number one, no exceptions, which means that right here, all you do is go like this, and then it stacks it. Because this right here, this is the load order. How they appear on here is the load order. When the server's coming up, it'll load this one first, and then it'll load this one, and then this one, and this one, and this one. A lot of mods have to be the first one loaded, just so where they get um, oh, loaded up first, and then the other ones come, and then they alter the stuff that's in that mod. And that's why um, stacking is a thing. But yeah, you can go through here, install a whole bunch of stuff, and then just have tons of fun. There's so, The modding community in ARC is very robust, and it is amazing. There's a lot of really talented mod or, um, uh, mod authors out there. So yeah, I encourage you, explore them, enjoy them. It's amazing. But unfortunately, if you're playing on PS4, Epic, uh, Xbox, Switch, anything like that, the G-Portal supports... Actually, I don't think the G-Portal supports Switch, but um, the Epic games, uh, Xbox, PS4, if you're playing on those ones, I'm sorry, you can't have mods. That's unfortunate. But if you're playing on Steam through PC, you can have mods, and it's absolutely amazing, and there is so many. The entire workshop is here. All you have to do is know what it is and search for it, uh, which I would recommend going onto Steam, checking out the Steam Workshop, and finding just some that you really enjoy or just very curious about. And one of your friends is like, hey, let's, let's try out this mod. You know what? This is how you do it, and it's awesome. Also, if you added a uh, modded map to uh, your server through the mods uh, section, uh, you add it through the mods, and then you go through, and then once you uh, um, install the modded map through there, you come back to the map, and then you drop down, and then it will actually have the list of the modded map here, and that's how you select the modded map as you go through there. All right, now also, if you're going through... And say you're playing with a group of friends, or if you're like me and you have um, moderators or administrators that uh, can help run the stuff behind the, um, uh, behind the scenes for you, you can add them to your permissions list. So for permissions, all you have to do is know their G portal, their G portal name, and then you put it right inside of here. And then um, from here, you will uh, just put it in. And then you click add user and it goes right down in here. Now, if it comes up as a red text up here at the top right saying that this person does not exist, um, try going to lowercase letters and then just trying again because a lot of times that works uh, for me as well. I've had, to, I've fiddled with this quite a bit. It does work. It is a little bit persnickety and finicky, but it does work very, very well. I've got a whole slew of admins that help me out running my servers. All right, then once you have your uh, uh, server set up, and I'm actually doing this afterwards because I've already deleted the dummy server, uh, but yeah, this is my underdog server. Uh, say if I wanted to uh, just join the server, I could actually just click this button right here, and it would pop open the game for me, and it would take me right to my server. There may be a little bit of load time. Just let it sit and it will take you there. If you want to uh, share this link with your friends, you can just copy, you can copy link, and boom, and just give them that link, and it'll take the, um, them, whoever clicks that link, right to your server. If they, uh, and if you have the whitelist set up, it'll just put them right in um, through. Uh, if it has a password, it'll ask them to um, put in the password, and then it'll put them through, and then that's how you do that. You can also, through Steam, you can also add this IP 
to your uh, IP list in the Steam server section that allows you to just uh, go right in and then uh, click it on favorites. It'll just add the server to your favorites. Uh, once um, you've clicked this link, though, uh, you can go through, you can create your character, and then in the drop-down menu of the game, you can actually just tell it to uh, sort by survivors. And then it'll take, it, you could just, once you uh, have the server targeted, uh, you could just go down the bottom right and just mark his favorite, and then it'll put you in. It's really easy to find the server, um, although it does take a little bit of... Uh, uh, experience to find the server. Uh, finding your server the first go, it's usually a little bit frustrating, but don't worry, your server is there. There are ways of finding it, and usually the easiest way is just click join server. All right, so hey, that's where I'm gonna end it. I hope this answered a lot of questions helping you set up your server. Uh, make sure you check out the links down below. Also, there is a uh, G Portal link down below that'll give you 10% off for the life of your server. Very cool, also it helps me out in the process. And then another one I'm gonna link down below is also uh, for how to set up uh, the best single player settings, which does also transfer straight onto servers. And it, it helps out quite a bit. And also it has a lot of my breeding settings that I use in a lot of my series. So hey, if you haven't already, uh, make sure you click that like button. Once again, I hope this video helps you out. I'm Flinger Foo, and take it easy, everybody.